Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to TGD Today. It's Pro Golf Talk Live with you, Roy the Third and George Honeycutt, and we've got a very special guest with us today. Assistant coach from Lander is Charlie Hoyle. Welcome, Charlie. Hello, George. Thanks for good having to me. see you, dude. Good to see you. Too. All the way from uh, England. Across the pond. Across, across the pond. From yeah. them. That's right. All right. Team I Cups. think he was English. Man yeah. U, so. Liverpool, Chelsea. Where are we at? Manchester United. Manchester United. Man U. Yeah. That's probably my... I'm not a massive soccer fan, but uh, or football is it's his real name, but I have right. to kind of translate for you guys. So. And we appreciate you that you do that. When in Rome, do it Rome. That's it. Yeah. I'm a thoughtful guy like that. So what's your thoughts on Tom Brady? <laughs> <laughs> he just, I mean, he needs to pump those balls up. Uh, really. <laughs> oh, here we go. Now he's getting me started, D. Hit the, uh, Hit the red finger button. on the red button. I know that much. Here I don't know a lot, but I know that much. <laughs> oh, HR? What's up? Off? What's yes. going on, dude? Not much this morning. Not much. <laughs> Got a lot of the colonials in. They're in a rain delay, oh, bad weather. I don't oh, even know if they're going to get this tournament in. I it? wouldn't expect it. I really wouldn't. And then, of course, they're going just down the road basically next week. And uh, the weather forecast is not good for the next several days. It's, just, it's awful. Good. So, I mean, I, Colonial can handle the water a little better than, you know, they can over where they play the Nelson. But, uh, you know, Colonial sits along that river and it, it drains really well, kind of the mm-hmm. sandy soil. But, mm-hmm. uh, but we're talking monsoon type rains. Oh, hail. Uh, tornado possibilities. And they've had several tornadoes even pass through the area over the last several days. They had uh, upwards of 10 inches of rain last week yep. in that area. And so there's just nowhere for the water to go. It's just saturated. It's just, it's just yeah, flooding, it's massive flooding. Colonial's such a good golf course. Well, we do have another major this week. Last week, of course, Shoal Creek, uh, the first major of the Senior Champions Tour. And uh, congratulations again to Jeff Maggard for pulling that one out, uh, his first quote-unquote major win and Champions Tour win. So that was nice of him. Uh, I love watching Jeff swing the club, dude. Matt I mean, I can go. He can play. He can golf his ball. It's just he's got that little right shoulder dip and just nice and smooth. You never see him swing. If there's a one or two mile an hour swing variance, I would be surprised if it's any more than that. Yeah. But uh, we talked about it, uh, of course, in our uh, TGD Today programming uh, about, you know, swinging at 65, 70 percent. He, he's kind of like Ernie and, and Louis Oosthuizen and Charles Swartzel and some of these other guys that just kind of look like they aren't swinging at 50 percent. It's amazing to watch it. And so you watch them and they rarely hit it offline. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. it's just, it's all about, it, it's, and, and it's all based off personality too, George. I mean, everybody's different. Yeah. But, you know, as long as it's consistent, you're in good shape. But, uh, you know, Olin Brown right now, two under par through six, got the lead. Um, and then Jerry Haas, the uh, club pro slash coach from Wake Forest, is at one under. We know Jerry. We know Jerry very well. Billy Andre, know him very well. I played against both of them when they were at Wake. So now everybody knows how really old I am. Uh, <laughs> They're at one under. Brian Henniger at one under. Nice to see him back. Robert Thompson, an old friend from the tour. Club Pro 9. Texas. Is Brian any taller? No. Okay. No. Just checking. No, he still looks like, what's his name, from uh, the Brady Bunch. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. This is all going straight over. Okay. No, no problem. It's okay. This is the old guys. Just, okay. Yeah. yeah. Just like you getting everybody. Fast. Yeah. That's the funny part is Jerry's beating Jay, so pretty good competition going there. Well, yeah. Yeah. And you know they're having fun together being oh, together this week. So, uh, again, another major going on right now is on the European Tour, of course, over in Wentworth, your neck of the woods. Mm-hmm. And uh, they are uh, playing the PGA, BMW PGA Championship. And uh, that is like, uh, if you want to refer to it, it's almost like the Players' Championship. It is, yeah, it's, it's a big deal. It's yeah. a big deal, yeah. So, uh, again, Wentworth, uh, historical, the castle, all that. It's changed hands several times. Back in the 1920s, it was actually built in the early 1800s. But back in 1920, uh, one of the current owners went out and said, hmm, I've got all this ground, let's build a golf course. And now they have three courses, 
they have a par, uh, nine-hole executive course. Uh, the wonderful lodge, castle, slash whatever you want to, you know, stay there at several hundred dollars a night. So, uh, but uh, the guys just absolutely love playing this golf course. And you can sense it. It's Quite a few of them uh, live around that area as well. I know Ernie lives, Ernie lives there. So He's 200 yards down the road, yeah. man. It's a he, beautiful place. He, can, he, he, he leaves the driving range and walks home. That's it, yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's good stuff. So, Roy, of course, returns back over after his stellar five weeks of play. And uh, it, he's it's real. Yeah, he he's is real. So, it, it's uh, – he, he got uh, – you know – I watched his round this morning. You did? Yes, Hugh. I got up at 2.30 again. Yeah. I watched his round this morning, and you could just tell it it, it almost looked like last week. Right. To the point where he didn't miss a shot, but it just looked like, ah, okay, I'll, I'll fire this at this pin, and I'm going to come up three yards short, and I'm going to end up with a 70-foot putt. So I'll put a two-putt on it, make par, move on. And... But you could just tell that there was another gear. He was just back on, let me go out, get my body acclimated. Let's, let me get the rest factor kicked in again. And then Saturday, I'm going to rip this place apart. That's what amazes me about those guys. You know, he's got so many different commitments with Nike and all, all the different media stuff he does. And, he's, you know, he's in America and makes that trip back to this, back to England. Obviously, it's a lot easier on a private jet. I can see that. Sure. But he's got all that other stuff going on. And like you said, he goes out there, he just kind of gets acclimatized and gets uh, gets back to square one. And the next couple of days, he's probably going to go out there and just tear it up. You could tell on a couple of holes, uh, the shorter hole, the 16th, the shortest of the par fours out there, um, he had a nice little three iron that went about 256, 257 three iron. Um, he just needed to get it past that that bunker on the right, and I'm sitting here going three hard, dude. Come on, <laughs> come on. You know, um, he was playing with uh, Keimer. Uh, Keimer struggled a little bit today. Uh, he was playing with Jamie Donaldson, who was really playing well, the front nine, and then Jamie kind of ran into some speed bumps on the back, but uh, he finished well. And um, but you could tell the three of them there just really wasn't this big charge, you know. And Keimer was just trying to catch up. Right. You could tell Keimer was just trying to catch He's up. He's been struggling a little bit lately too. He has. Yeah. And everybody's waiting for him to kick back into that U.S. Open mode from last year, and he just hasn't quite done it yet. Mm -hmm. And Rory today putting. I mean, he had several five foot putts for par, and just every one of them center cut drained. No question about it. So that little three minutes he did with Dave Stockton a week and a half ago. And I listened to that, uh, to Mr. Stockton, you know, explain what he did with him. It really wasn't anything technical as much as it was his routine, mm -hmm. you know, and getting him to where he slowed down and thought just a little bit as he walked in because he said it's just too fast. Well, you noticed that the players, you and I commented on this, noted this, that he had a tendency of, of pulling the putt a little bit left. He was missing left. Whether it was low or high, he was missing left. And he was towing over a little quickly. And you hear the three minutes that Stockton uh, talked about was just keeping the face balanced and, you know, square at, you know, at impact. And, uh, boy, did that do wonders. I mean, he was just, he looked so pure this morning. And which is interesting because these greens at Whitworth are pro-anna. So uh, they were getting some kind of iffy bounces here and there. But uh, Jamie Donaldson had a 35-footer. And he hit it, and then about a foot away from the strike of the ball, it looked like it hopped off the ground three inches. Yeah. And it just, hit, it just hit one of the weed pockets in the Poana greens. But they're rolling the best that they claim that they've ever rolled right now, and they sped them up to almost 13. Mm. Wow. So speedy down Poana is tough to do. You don't see that much uh, back, back home either. You don't see green speeds like that. So. Well, they, they've had some a little bit of wet weather. Um, yeah. They were really kind of hoping that that's the course unusual. would firm up a little bit. Yeah, it's unusual for, for unusual. England. Um, but, um, you know, again, the golf course played f fantastic this morning. It was great watching it. I love Wentworth. It, it's just a beautiful track. Um, hilly, you don't imagine how undulated it is, but it actually is. Um, 
it's only about 50 minutes outside of London. Yeah. And uh, so it's it's out in the rural area, but then again, too, it's pretty close to everything. Yeah. So, um, and yep. then next week, and we, we did a little hats off to Rory uh, Monday, of course, at Monday Morning Golf Wrap this last week. We did hats off to Rory because next week the Irish Open, he is the, him and Graham are really the only reasons that that tournament's even ongoing next week. The European Tour had canceled the event. They had ran out of charity, and uh, there there was no major sponsors. And uh, so the Rory uh, McElroy Foundation has now become the title sponsor for the Irish Open. And uh, so hats off to him, hats off to Graham, hats off to Ricky, who is headed that way. Headed over there. Um, so they're going to have quite the field for the Irish Open. And um, I'm, I'm just looking forward to it. I, I, I would say so. I mean, for a young man to step up and do that for his home country and for their, you know, their national open, I think it's, it's pretty impressive in itself. Um, but I tell you what, though, you look up around that leaderboard, George, obviously Keegan's not playing over there because him and that play were pretty good. <laughs> I'd take I'd take the mechanic. Uh, I would I would man. take the mechanic in that battle. No, I no question about it. I mean, he he, he could beat him with kind of he could beat him with the stogie, dude. Absolutely, he but, beat him with the stogie. But it's one just, that's still one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Well, I think Keegan's got bigger issues. I don't okay, I believe so. I'm not touching. That. <laughs> well, Robert Carlson shoots 67 on the first day to be five under par, and there were several players, folks, that were hovering. At four and five under, uh, you got uh, Campillo, you got Chris Wood. Who Chris Wood's fun to watch. He's yes. just a young guy. He's he, you know, he just goes out there. He bless his heart. He would have finished so much better. He would actually probably been at six under par, except uh, he kind of snapped one. I mean, it was it was snapped. I'll just say it that way. It was a it was a snap draw hook pull, whatever you want to call it, but this thing went about 60 yards out of bounds, and uh, so he had to drop another one, ended up making six, almost made five, but uh, ended up making six, but uh, he finishes at four under. Miguel Angel Jimenez, as we talked about, he's at four under par. Y.E. Yang at four under par. Pablo Lorathabal uh, Lor is at uh, three under. Tommy Fleetwood, the hairdo, you gotta love it, man. Tommy's a good fella. You he's gotta nice love fella. it. You know, you can't you can't lose him in a crowd. No. no. You know, it, it looks a little bit like Hugh from the 70s, except until he takes the hat off and he actually has hair on the top. 70s? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. In, the, in, the, in the late 60s, early yeah. 70s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was yeah. in junior high. With the mohawk and the, and the do in the back. Yeah. I've, I've seen pictures. I've seen pictures. And the Impressive. pajama pants. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Him and the Immelmans, yeah. We all have regrets, though. Nicholas Cozart shot three under par. How about that? Good to see Nicholas back. The Belgian bomber. Yeah. He can pound it. He can. Mark Warren's at three under par. Oh, your boy's at tie for 12th. Tong Jai Jai D. <laughs> That's George's boy. Just because of his name or yeah. Tong Jai Just like saying that. Uh, good to see him. He was actually at three under and ended up bogeying one of the last few holes. Shoot 70. Jamie Donaldson, as I mentioned, finished at two under for the day. Uh, again, Rory, just kind of a ho-hum, minus one. He's four shots back from the lead, yeah. but uh, right you're just waiting. You just you just want to know if you're going to see the gear. Maybe he's too tired. Who knows? He, I mean, he's on a six-week stretch now, that's and, a lot of and so that's a lot of golf. That's a lot back of and golf. forth, back and forth. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I think he's got it. I think the gear's there. Yeah. Um, I think he'll get back, get acclimated, um, you know, Next week, he's going to get some mama home cooking, so uh, that'll be good. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, is He'll see his house there in Ireland, and uh, he probably hasn't seen that in six months. Um, so, you know, I think uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch him and Graham next week be host, and then also, too, to go out and try to win their own event. So that'll be a lot of fun to watch. Uh, Justin Rose finished at two under par. He was real quiet in his round today. Uh, as a matter of fact, he's only through seven holes right now, so he was one of the afternoon uh, players. So he's making a move, but again, quiet. He he's just uh, you never hear anything about out of Justin. You just never do. Um, he's not a big Twitter guy. He's not a big Facebook guy like Ian. Uh, but um, 
again, he's going to be up there and he's going to be playing well. So he's definitely one of the top ten players in the world. This is a good field for this event. As we mentioned, Ernie Ells, basically in Ernie's backyard, he lives, he has a home about 200 yards away from the driving range. So literally yesterday he was out practicing and then literally walked home, had lunch, then walked back up and putted, and then walked home and had dinner. <laughs> and so it's a good uh, backyard uh, event for Ernie Ells. And uh, he looked very comfortable out there. But um, uh, Karadesh Afi Bonrod was actually at three under par at one point in time in his round this morning. He finishes even par. Uh, Karadesh does not pull any punches. Have, I mean, have you studied that game? We talked about it many times. He just, he'll rear back and slap it at any pin that's out there. Absolutely. I don't care. I mean, you take the stadium course in Jacksonville, that pin could be over in the bunker, and he would do everything in his power to hit something into that bunker. He just would not. He, he, he just doesn't know how to lay up. One he of doesn't my, know how to hit the middle. One of my favorite players as well, which I'm glad to see, one under so far, um, Alvaro Quiros. Oh. I love that guy. Big swing. I love that guy. I'm glad to see he's been he's been struggling. But I'm I really wish he would get. I mean, he hit such a long ball with everything. I mean, the dude's huge. Um, as far as not in physically aspect, you you sit and look at him and go, my goodness, where does he get the power? Mm -hmm. You know, he's like you, six four and weighs nothing. Right. <laughs> but um, the point is, is I wish he could match the short game with his length. Yeah. Uh, sure. He seems to struggle with the short stick, the putter. He seems to, he'll have a good week, uh, like at the Turkish Open last year, and then he'll just disappear. absolutely disappear. Yeah. And so he can't, he'll struggle to make a cut, but yet he'll hit 70% of the fairways and he'll hit, you know, 83% of the greens, but he just can't make a putt. So I just, I wish he would be, you know, improve on that short game a little bit. Lee, Lee Westwood at one point in time was a couple under par. He finishes it even for the day. Again, there was a big morning wave that gone out, and now the afternoon rounds, of course, they are five hours ahead of us, I believe. Am I right there, Charlie? Mm -hmm. Five or six. Uh, I think it's five. Five hours. Yep. <laughs> so, excuse me, folks. Um, again, Robert Rock, uh, the hair, Mr. Hare himself. Mr. Hare, that's him. The helmet head. Yeah. I wish I had his hair. You imagine what the Dapper Dan would look like in Robert Rock's hair. They don't make enough. They don't make enough Dapper Dude, Dan, I don't think. We're talking, I'd go through a, I go through a case a month now. We're talking two cases a month. I, I can't. I, can't. I got to get in touch with the Dapper Dan people, by the way. They just went up in price. Okay. Yeah. I got a little complaint in the day. Okay. Okay. Why don't you, why don't you research that for me and get back to me? Yeah, I'll get right on. Okay. Uh, anybody else you want to point out? Um, Yaus Luton. Is one over through eight. Luke Donald. How does he get in the tournaments, dude? <laughs> I, I don't he's know. He's you know, you look at Graham. Graham's th eight for three over. I mean, he's not playing well. No doubt. I mean, you know, the Padre Harrington withdrew. Or, yeah, yeah, he Harrington. did. He was one over, I think. Well, it's one withdrew. It's, uh, you know, uh, is Danny Willett's at one over through six. Uh, let's see here. Anders Hansen is at two over through eight. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. Marshall Seam, two over. He's finished his round, 74. Let's see who we got. I always like to report on who's really blowing it out. Uh, Jin Jung <laughs> from Korea is 13 over par for the day. Shot 85. <laughs> Jin had a rough day on the list Jin today. had a hard day. Paul Laurie's at 7 over through 18. He shoots 79. Uh, I mean, we can go down through. Daniel Brooks is 6 over through 9. He's still out on the course. Peter Uline is 5 over through 17, still out on the course. Um, so some really high numbers here, guys. Yes. I'm, I'm really – again, Wentworth is not a pushover, even though it's an older style golf it's course. It's not a pushover. I think, like you said earlier, the greens are what are giving a lot of guys the hassles. Well, I mean, if you don't pay attention, the undulations that Wentworth will definitely jump up and grab you. Uh, Rory had about a 15-footer for birdie, and literally he played it at eight to, eight to nine feet of break. And so that's that's a lot of movement for a 15-foot putt. Yeah. And um, he, had to, he had to really watch the speed or it had gotten away from him. Where Martin Keimer, it did get away from him. He went six feet past the cup and missed the comeback. Yeah. So uh, 
you definitely got to pay attention. Not only do you got to keep it in the the uh, kind of the smallish width wise hair, uh, fairways, uh, a lot of trees, and then the rough is. Although it doesn't play that stuff. You know, the, you guys have different kind of rough in England than we do here. Yeah, we do. We have it's, a lot it's of It's a little skews. wiry. It is very it's wiry. wiry. It's very wiry. 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 Thank you. That's wiry. Cool. <laughs> I grew up on a Lynx course, so, um, so yeah, I'm used to that. I'm hitting that rough a lot. Not anymore, but obviously. No, okay. Hold on. You just said you hit it in a rough, but not anymore. Not anymore, no. And that's because you're not playing there. Right. Yeah, that's, that's exactly, why you don't hit it. exactly why. Yeah. <laughs> and because she's my instructor. I'm just, it's not that your game's improved. You're just not old enough to hit it in the rough exactly. anymore. Exactly. <laughs> Got it. See? It's, it's just a heck of a coach. You know? Oh, here we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hugh, anything else going on? Pro Golf Talk? Not much, but I think that covers about everything. Well, I'm looking forward to watching the rest of the Wentworth. And, of course, uh, coming up, we've got a very special holiday weekend here in the States. And I'm looking forward to the Indianapolis 500 yes. and the Coca-Cola 600 and uh, some good golf. And uh, so bring our veterinary, our vets, veterinary time I've done, our vets. Vet, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Ten years. Yep. I just, that's what this weekend is about, and that's what it needs to be remembered. That's just my own I'll be wearing too. my red, white, and blue on Monday. That a boy. Yeah. Charlie, thanks for joining us, babe. My pleasure. Again, uh, as I mentioned in previous shows, come back and see us any time, man. Will do. I love the accent. Thank you. Yeah. And you look a lot better than he does. So. All right, guys. <laughs> Pro Golf Talk Live on TGD he today. He has his Look at his hair. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> TGD Radio and TV are produced and broadcast by the Zeus Radio Network for thegolfdirector.com. When visiting the Golf Director, be sure to check out our featured course pages where you'll find up-to-date information about course conditions, specials, and much, much more. Need help with your next golf vacation? Just, Just call Dave. Dave. Boy, you go out down. I hope you take that. That was good. Beautiful. Just give us a call here at 844-GO-GOLF-1. That's 844-464-6531. And ask for Dave. You'll have a blast speaking to him. All of our TGD programming is archived for listening and viewing on demand. To catch up on any show you may have missed, click on the TGD radio or the TGD TV tabs in the menu screen at thegolfdirector.com. We're now available on over 1 billion devices at iTunes, Audio Realm, TuneIn, YouTube, Ustream, Roku, Blueberry, and Myrtle Beach Golf App. For HR3, I'm the Godfather, and we want to thank Charlie for joining us and Big D Behind the Glass, and we want to thank you for tuning in with us today. There's more golf news and information coming up next.